So my name is Stephanie Plummer. I'm a program coordinator with uh, Nebraska Arts Council. And you are joining us today for our Budget Basics uh, webinar. So thank you for being here. Uh, I'll be going through some slides, but feel free to drop questions into the chat if you have any questions or thoughts or want to touch base with any of the folks who are uh, uh, on staff today and also attending the webinar. Um, I'm not going to have them go around and introduce themselves, but um, we have a few people um, joining us today um, from Nebraska Arts Council who might be able to answer some questions um, and who you might see pop into the chat from time to time. So uh, Ann Alston, our program specialist, is with us, and she manages a great deal of the um, educational programs um, that we offer. Uh, Rachel Morgan, another program specialist, uh, is here with us today, and she uh, provides support for our project grant categories, uh, as well as some invitation-only categories. Um, and then I believe I saw Mike Markey earlier. He's our deputy director, and so um, he really... Um, I would say he, he's sort of like a driving force, right? And, um, and sort of is the umbrella um, that, that sort of covers all these different grant categories. Um, so those folks are with us today. And uh, one reason I wanna point that out is um, you see on your screen here, a list of different grant categories and the folks associated with them. Uh, this is budget basics, but um, it's important to note that depending on what category of grant you're interested in applying for, your budget requirements and your budget template are going to vary. And so you'll want to visit with that specific staff person if you um, have some um, questions about that particular grant category and how to work with your budget. So these are the folks you want to reach out to if you have questions about these, uh, the budgets in these grant categories. So uh, just to go over some of our goals for today, uh, we want to introduce you to basic budget writing and development. Um, we also want to familiarize you with um, at least one of the um, sort of primary NAC budget templates, but we'll touch on a few of the others possibly as we go along. Um, and we really wanna minimize some of the hurdles that occur with budgets during the application process. Um, it sometimes happens that your organizational budget might not line up exactly with how our templates look. And so knowing um, you know, what different things mean and what our requirements are is really gonna help you go through that very smoothly. And ultimately, part of uh, budget writing is to help get you funded. And so we want to uh, provide this information so that you can minimize quite possible questions that reviewers might have um, and really help you get like the best score you can and um, uh, get you funded. So um, <clears throat> before we get to the nuts and bolts of kind of the income and expense and things like that, um, it's important to point out some of the things that can uh, be funded by us and some that can't. And so I'm going to talk a little bit also to when we get down to the what can't we fund about a few of the um, not necessarily exceptions, but caveats to those uh, different ineligible uh, expense categories. So the top section is what can we fund? Well, artist fees um, and their out of town travel, um, those costs related to their, their, um, their travel, um, such as uh, you know, food, things like that. But primarily the artist fee is the, the big thing that we really wanna, wanna see. We wanna see that you're supporting artists through your projects. Um, so that's an important thing that we really wanna fund. Um, obviously, marketing costs are going to be a big portion of most budgets, and so that is something that um, many of our project grants can fund. Uh, project accessibility is something that, that can be funded. We actually have a separate category of grants that can help you with making your projects more accessible. Um, and then student transportation to art experiences. Uh, we also have a separate category for that, School Bus for the Arts, that can help with that. But certainly, depending on the scale of your project, you may want to include those uh, transportation experience or expenses, excuse me, into your larger budget. 
Uh, what can't we fund? So generally food and beverages. So um, uh, things like big catering costs, that's not necessarily something we are going to um, fund, um, especially when it's related to fundraisers. Um, so, um, and again, that's except for costs related to artists. Uh, school productions. Um, generally, um, school productions are more appropriately funded by the school. Um, but if you want to hire a professional artist, such as a choreographer, um, a, a professional director to work with uh, your students, something like that would be something that would be eligible to be funded. And you would probably want to reach out to one of our staff members to discuss that because it, that is such a narrow fundable expense um, compared to the, the size of a school production. So I would definitely recommend reaching out to one of us if, if that's something you're interested in. Um, we don't fund projects that exclude the public. Um, we get this question pretty frequently. Well, does that mean tickets? No. Um, we, we definitely want your nonprofit organization to, um, you know, sustain itself. And so selling tickets is perfectly okay. Um, they just need to be accessible um, for purchase by the public. So there needs to be a way that folks can actually buy those tickets. Um, for events that have already taken place, that's another one that we don't fund. Um, if you go to our grant guidelines and each web page for the grant, there are specific deadlines that are set up that will actually show you basically the date range that the activity must take place. So for instance, if, for instance, if something says it is due by six weeks prior to the start date, well, that very clearly means that you can't have started the project already. So you wanna take a look at those deadlines. Um, and then general operating costs. We'll talk a little bit later um, about uh, the administration expenses that might come up in your budget. Um, but for now, know that there's not, uh, not a, um, we generally don't support operating expenses. So your budget form, again, is gonna really vary depending on the grant category. You can see all four of these look vastly different and they're for different categories. <clears throat> for this workshop today, we're gonna focus on the arts project grant. And there is some overlap in terms of, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, what's required or what kind of expenses your reviewer is really looking to, um, to see in those budgets from category to category, um, but they are different. And so you'll want to get into those guidelines, take a look at what's uh, allowable and eligible in that category. But again, we are going to look at the APG grant today, and that's uh, basically the third one from the left. So before we even really get to, you know, the, the template itself, we're going to talk about um, how you sort of start building that budget and um, really developing those line items and expenses and thinking through the expense categories. So um, I always like to start with the expenses. Um, your expenses really contain all the elements of your project and what you hope will occur. So the questions listed on this slide represent some of the expense categories that are actually on the budget template, but I'm gonna briefly go over some of the other things that will show up in uh, the budget template. So I would suggest starting with your artistic expenses. Um, that's gonna be the root of your event, right? You can't really have a, an arts project if you don't have some art in it. And so thinking through those artistic exp expenses is going to be really where you should start. So thinking through whether you're gonna have a choreographer, um, whether you need an accompanist um, for maybe your concert, um, are you commissioning uh, an artist's work for your exhibit? Um, what's that artist's fee going to be, right? So you want to think through all of those things and then start there. Um, and then next on the slide, you can see what kind of marketing expenses will you have? Certainly your marketing is going to depend on your target audience. And that's, that's really important to kind of think through is, um, you know, if you're trying to reach your, your typical audience, then you're gonna have a good sense of what kind of marketing is gonna be effective. If you want to expand your audience, then it might take a little bit of research, but again, 
you want to think through those expenses and how they relate to the results that you want. So are you going to need to pay for social media posts? Are you going to run an ad in a newspaper? Do you need to do posters? And even deeper than that, um, if you are printing and producing paper media, how many of those do you need to print? Um, and, and what is that cost per item going to cost you? So you wanna think through those things as well. Um, other project expenses. Um, sometimes this is an area that can be a little confusing because it is other. So it's things that don't fit well into the other categories. But a couple of examples of uh, expense items we might see in this category would be masks for participants or art supplies is a really common one. Another one might be sheet music. So those are kind of the main ones, but you also want to think through things like your facilities and space. Are you going to be renting space? Do you need space for rehearsals? If you have instruments, do you need to store them somewhere? And do you need to pay for that storage? So that's another thing to think through. And then additionally, what kind of travel is involved? Some artists will you know, lump their travel and everything into their fee. Other artists are gonna require that separately. So you wanna think through that, um, think through that travel that that's required. And then the last category I wanna uh, mention here is administration expenses. So I mentioned before that in general, we don't support operating expenses, but for the arts project grant and the arts learning grant, um, there can be operational expenses that equal up to 25%. And, and do correct me if I'm wrong about the ALG on that, but I know for the APG it's 25%. Um, so 25% of your total expenses can go to administration. Um, in the past, this has been used to help um, with things like insurance. Say if you're having an outdoor festival and you need to have some sort of liability insurance for that. Um, if you need to hire a grant writer to help assist you with uh, grant applications. Um, if you need um, to contract with an, an accountant to help you figure out the taxes involved um, with your project. Um, that 25% can be used for those sorts of expenses. So now that you've got kind of a handle on the expenses that are gonna be associated with your project, then it's time to move on to the uh, income. So how are you gonna pay for it? Um, you've got big goals, big dreams, and now it's time to get into um, really analyzing uh, what kind of funding you need to seek out for your project. So um, will you charge admission or require tuition? Uh, admissions are pretty self-explanatory. On the um, budget template, uh, there is a category for contracted expenses. And so with that, that's gonna be uh, things like workshops that you might be charging for. Um, and so that's a little bit different. And we do get questions about that because it is a little bit different than the admissions category. Um, but those are contracted services that your organization is providing um, and typically would be in association with your project. Uh, are you expecting any grants, sponsorships, individual donations? Uh, there's categories in the arts project grant for all of those different categories for you to enter in those, um, those different items. So corporate support would be business donations, um, foundation support would be grants, um, and those might come from private foundations um, or family foundations. And it can be really helpful for reviewers to know at what stage in that granting process you're in. So have you already reached out? Have you applied? Is it a secured, um, secured award already? Um, detailing that in the actual template in the description uh, can be really helpful. Um, and it's important as you plan through to think about um, whether community partners will contribute. Um, I have seen some grants where a partner will provide an actual cash amount to the hosting organization or presenting organization. But you do want to talk that out too, because occasionally community partners will offer in-kind donations. 
and those are not allowable on our budget. So you do want to um, talk those out with any partners that you're working with to find out what they're contributing um, so that you can either make sure it's removed from your budget or you're entering it in your budget. And we'll talk a little bit more, a couple of times more actually about in-kind donations and what to do with those. Um, a couple other things is public income. So there's a category on our template for public income, and that would include things like government grants, like the NEA fund, um, like an NEA fund, um, I'm sorry, NEA grant, um, or something like your county's tourism grant. Um, and then uh, another category is applicant cash, and that's related to the question here at the bottom. Is your organization contributing to your project. So um, do you need to use some of the organization's cash to make the budget balance? Um, does your organization set aside operational funds for each of your programs? Um, you wanna think through those, those sorts of questions. Um, and it's possible your organization may not need to actually pull any specific funds for that. You may be able to cover everything with your admission or your grants or something like that. But it's important to think about that. Um, and I would mention too that, that the applicant cash, it's not necessarily how much money you have sitting in your checkbook. Um, this is really how much your organization will set aside um, for the specific project. Okay. Hang on just a sec, folks. I'm freezing up here a little bit. So there we go. Okay, good. Sorry about that. So a couple of tips. Um, and again, we're talking about the arts project grant. Um, things like cash match um, and uh, the, the type of expenses, it's gonna vary again from uh, category to category. But for arts project, uh, we are looking for the expenses to equal the income, right? So if your project is $4,000, then what we should see is we should see that uh, all your income, including your NAC request, equals $4,000. We also require a dollar-to-dollar -dollar cash match. And so what that means is for that $4,000, 2000 of your income uh, is going to be your request to us. And then 2000 is going to be income from your grants, your applicant cash, your admission, all those things totaled together. Uh, so it needs to be split evenly. Uh, you also want to keep, again, your administration expense limited to 25% of the total expenses. Um, and it's so it's important to really take a look at that before you submit your budget because depending on the amount of administration expense in there, we might have to have you revise your budget. So uh, you want to take a look at that before submitting your application. Uh, reviewers really like to see diverse income sources. Uh, they want to see that community support. And that can really be evident um, through things like individual donations, your expected admission, uh, the number of grants you're getting from local family foundations, all of that is really helpful to reviewers uh, to see. Um, and then next, uh, ensure that your budget matches your narrative. So if you talk about something in your narrative, make sure it's reflected in the budget. So if you're planning on three artists, then make sure that your budget says three artists or if, if it doesn't, if it, if it only has two in the budget line for artists, then make sure in the text box that we provide below and that I'll talk about in just a second here in more detail, make sure it includes a reason why that third artist is not included in the budget. Um, if you state in your narrative that you're planning on 300 students at a summer camp, but your budget only shows 200 students in that contracted services line, uh, the, the panelists are going to wonder why that, that discrepancy is there. So it's really important to um, make sure that if it's in the narrative, it's in the budget as well. Uh, and that goes to itemization too. So we require um, itemization um, throughout those budgets. And you'll want to then uh, break out things like 300 students times $10 each or what have you. 
um, so that the reviewers can see that breakdown. Okay. Um, and then, so our budget for the APG, the Arts Project Grant, includes a text box, text box, excuse me. And that is there for you to talk about in-kind donations and to expand on itemization and description. So for example, um, say that you have a festival and one of your board members is donating the use of a generator for a few hours to power uh, displays and lighting at that festival. So you wouldn't be able to include that in the regular line items of your budget, but in that text box, you could, you could discuss that. You could say use of generator uh, contributed in kind for this many hours. And that's gonna help the reviewer know that you have that community support, even though it may not show up in your income. And again, use that text box uh, to expand on itemization. So I use the example of, of three artists. So perhaps that, that third artist actually is contributing their time to the project. Um, or, you know, there might be some other reason. So perhaps they are getting paid for a different project and it's all lumped into that project. So there's going to be a reason, but you need to discuss it in the text box so the reviewers have a good understanding of that. All right, so now that we've sort of filled out that budget and really um, thought through our expenses and our income, and we're keeping in mind some of those budget tips that we have, uh, we're gonna guide you then to uh, our webpage, our homepage. Uh, so you want to go to our homepage, uh, artscouncilnebraska.gov, and if you click on apply for a grant and then grant system login, that is going to take you to our grant system. And that page looks like this. So this is our online grant system and you can see there's a big blog on button there. So if you've already got an account, you would just wanna go ahead and hit that button, go ahead and get in there. Um, probably don't do it right this second um, because that means you'll be splitting your attention and depending on your internet, it may pull a lot of resources. So um, you might wanna wait. But uh, if you do have an account in our system, you can just click on log on and get yourself in there. Uh, if you're not sure whether you have an account or not, definitely reach out to us and ask. We can look that up. Uh, if you know for certain that you don't have an account, then go ahead and click on create new account. And that'll get you started in the process of setting that up. Um, I'm not necessarily going to go into all the materials that you need for setting up an account uh, in our system. It's actually not that much, but if you do have questions about that, you want to reach out to our uh, grants and database administrator again for help. Uh, if you know you have an account but have forgotten your password, we don't have that information. So you'll want to go ahead and click on forgot password to set that up. So once you get in there, um, you'll go to your dashboard and you can see there's a little bitty house at the top there, apply. And so for many organizations that already have accounts, um, you might get in there and actually see your active grants. Uh, so what you would wanna do in that case is go ahead and hit apply um, right next to the house. And then that'll show you the list of available grants that are open for applications at the moment. And you can see that there's a preview button on the left right next to those big red arrows. So if you just wanna take a look at the application before deciding to apply, you can definitely do that. But if you click the button all the way to the right that says apply, that's gonna take you into the actual, uh, into the actual uh, grant itself. And depending on the um, grant category, the placement of that budget is going to be a little different. For APGs, it tends to be in the lower third of that application. But once you get there, then you'll want to click on a link for your budget template and download that. So you'll save it and name it. And I would recommend saving your budget to a location that's really easily accessible for you. That way it doesn't get lost. And then make sure to name your file. So you wanna name it something that is, um, again, gonna help you identify it. Um, it. It does occur sometimes that we'll have applicants who have maybe uploaded a blank budget template and it's likely because they downloaded multiple versions of the budget template and then 
didn't have it titled in a way that they could locate it easily and then end up uh, ended up uploading the wrong template. Um, we'll definitely reach out to you if that happens, but um, that's one reason why it's important to make sure you're saving this budget to a location you can find easily and naming it in a way that indicates that it's an active, um, active file that you're going to upload for your application. If you have Mac, um, then I believe the process for that is clicking in the spreadsheet window to make it active. And then again, just save it and name it. Um, our system uh, doesn't allow us to see uh, numbers, which is the Mac program. So you'll wanna convert your numbers spreadsheet to an Excel before you upload it and submit it. Um, definitely, if you have trouble with that, reach out to us and let us know. A couple more tips for working with Excel. So you wanna read those error messages um, carefully. And that's not because there's anything scary about them. Um, it's just sometimes we start working and we don't necessarily um, read things right away. And so something like enable editing, you just click on that and that's gonna allow you to um, work with the budget template. Um, and then you may get other um, error messages uh, about the compatibility. Um, and generally, those sorts of messages are just letting you, you know that there's a slight difference in the program. But in general, it's not going to affect um, your overall budget. Um, it'll be fine. So just hit continue on that. So a couple of notes about our budget templates. We pre-format them. So we include things like formulas and um, a lot, you know, there's a there's descriptions and things like that. So they're all pre-formatted so that you can work easily with them. Um, we would uh, dissuade you heartily from um, unlocking uh, the, um, the, the, the templates, um, because it can really mess up things like the way the instructions appear and it can mess up things like the formula. So try not to mess with that. Um, we really tried to set the budget templates up so they're easy to use. Um, so those formulas I mentioned are there to help automatically calculate the totals, um, so that you don't have to do all that math. We know you're busy. Um, generally, all of our budget templates have basic instructions at the top and uh, will sometimes include things like um, eligible expense, what is considered an eligible expense. And so for here, the example you can see provides a little bit of that um, information about in-kind contributions, um, things like that. So on your screen, you're seeing a portion of the actual application here, or I'm sorry, the actual budget template. And so you would wanna go through and fill out your form. And so in artistic fees, you're going to include um, all of those things that were discussed earlier that you've you know, laid out and planned. And you can see an example of the itemization there. So three artists times 500 each. Um, and then down below, you can see subtitle, um, or I'm sorry, subtotal. And it looks like I missed that when I was editing this. <laughs> it says sub subtotal outside services, but that's probably incorrect. But in any case, those subtitles in each section will, um, will happen automatically as you enter in your amounts. And you can see um, the description cell and then the amount cell. So you wanna make sure you um, put a good description in those. Okay, and then, so I'm just making sure I've talked about everything. I'm having a little bit of an off day, but that happens, so. Um, so again, knowing kind contributions, dollar to dollar match for the APG. Okay. So here's a little screenshot of the text box. And uh, again, this is where you wanna put uh, that in kind information. I really like to emphasize um, that, you, that you use this box and how helpful it is. So if you need to, again, explain any line items that are up above, if you need to itemize um, more thoroughly. So for example, if you um, have three artists, that's gonna fit pretty well in that description cell. But if you've got 20 artists that are involved in the project, you might wanna expand on it further because even though you can keep typing in those cells, a reviewer is not necessarily gonna see that very well. So 
that can be useful to really expand in this area. Um, the other thing you can put in this, um, this text box, which can be helpful, is if you're providing something that does have a value to your audience, um, but can't be covered within the actual um, template. So for example, if you are providing 100 free tickets to families in your area, that's zero dollars. So you're not going to want to put it in your income uh, in, as an income item in your budget, but you could include that here. And again, that's going to help your reviewer compare the budget to the narrative. So if you're talking about having um, free tickets for families in your community, uh, then having a number here is going to be helpful. Okay. So We've got a couple of examples to look at. I've tried to blow this up as much as I could uh, for you to see, but I believe we've got a couple of links that Rachel is going to share in the chat um, so that you can all take a closer look. Um, so just take a minute. We're gonna be a little quiet here and we'll just take a minute and check out what we have here um, on this budget. And um, so if you want to point out anything you notice um, that you think they did well or you think is maybe missing, feel free to drop that into the chat. Um, we'll just take a little bit of time to, um, to kind of peruse this, so to speak. And this is the expense side. We'll look at the income side in just a second. So if anybody has any thoughts about this particular budget and what you're seeing here, feel free to drop it in the chat. I think pretty obviously one thing this organization did well is they really um, wrote quite a bit in the text box. So they mentioned that they um, have donated ad space um, to other arts organizations. Um, so that's one. They've mentioned how many postcards they're sending out, right? So they've really sort of gone through their budget uh, and really thought through the things that they needed to further address in the text box. Um, if you look up in the artistic fees, um, they have um, included a line for each of those, you know, artists and professionals. Um, <clears throat> that is helpful because then we can clearly see, you know, that the, it's not just a lump of artists times 12, you know, and this dollar amount of money equals, you know, this amount. They've actually broken it out into the different lines. And then um, for the musicians, they've also itemized that as well. So 12 at $415 each. Um, they've also included an ASL interpreter and in their other contractual fees. So other contractual fees can be helpful um, for people. What I tend to see in here is just what you're seeing. So photographers, videographers, people who have expertise, um, but they're, they're not necessarily the focus of the project, right? They're there to support um, or to provide um, their specific skills and artistry, but it's not a focus of the, of the project itself. So videographers, photographers, ASL interpreters is something you might see here. And again, we do have a category for accessibility where you could apply for an ASL interpreter. Uh, this organization has just elected to, to go ahead and wrap that into their, their total project budget here. So if we go to the income side, we can um, see that they've done a great job of a few things here. Um, so again, if you see anything that you wanna point out or you think might be missing here, go ahead and drop it into the chat. Um, but if you look up at their admissions, they've done a really good job of breaking down all those tickets. And not only did they itemize those, those tickets, they showed those tiers too. So there's premium tickets, tier one tickets, tier two tickets. So this is very thorough. And a reviewer is really going to um, appreciate this. And I, you know, if you total this all up, you've got 396, 220, you know, you've got almost a thousand tickets here. And so um, having just the thousand tickets and then the dollar amount, that's not really going to give a lot of uh, really valuable information 
to the reviewer, something like this is really going to help them see that this is a well-organized project and that your organization has a lot of different opportunities for audience engagement. Um, so that itemization can be so helpful to you. Um, the other thing we can see here is they've got various funding sources. So for other earned income, they've got program advertising um, and foundation support. They've got a couple of um, uh, foundations. They've got other earned income and they've got so much here that they actually don't need anything in their applicant cash. Um, so they've done a really good job of really itemizing and um, you can see in the text box also that they included 140 complimentary tickets for donors and special guests. So they've really done a, a good job here. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the next, uh, next example here. And again, these links are in the chat. So if you want to download these samples for yourself and take a closer look, you certainly can. So we're looking right now at uh, sample project B. Uh, and so again, take a second to see what you notice about this budget, um, what you think they could include um, what you think they may have done well. We'll just take a second to, to just take a little time and take a look at this, so. Okay, so one thing that I notice um, is that they've really, you know, kind of lumped all of the entertainment together. They don't even necessarily exactly say what kind of entertainment it is. They've got music, dance, entertainment in a, a lump sum there. Uh, so something like this certainly can be itemized and put into different lines in the artistic fees. Uh, you might also notice too that under other contractual fees that they've um, included their hall rental there, but that would probably be better. I know it would be better under space facilities. Um, so in addition to, you know, making sure you have all of your, your items, your expense items for your budget, you also want to make sure that you're inserting them into the right category so that your reviewer knows where to look for those things. Um, so they included reception supplies in their budget. Um, you can see that up in other project expenses. And generally, it's okay to include in the budget. It's just, again, not something we can fund, right? Um, but it can be helpful for viewers who want to see that whole picture. Um, it may have been better, though, for them to put that in the text box. Um, certainly, this is a very small amount for their overall budget. But if this budget came in and had, you know, $5,000 for reception supplies, we would likely have to go back to the applicant and have a conversation with them about editing their budget or, you know, what exactly that $5,000 entails. Maybe it was a mistake, a typo, who knows? So, um, but we would probably go back with some questions. Okay, all right. And then on the income side, and again, just take a look, see if you notice anything, see if there's things that you might do a little differently. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty lean uh, budget in terms of income. Um, they did itemize their admission, so super helpful there. That's great. Uh, they've included applicant cash, and they've named it project cash, and that can be really helpful because then it's very clear that it's for the specific project. Um, so that's actually a really good thing that they did there. Um, and that helps us know, too, that the organization is like committed to the project, right, that they've set aside funds for it. But in general, you know, there's not a lot of diverse income sources here. Um, the text box, um, it wasn't utilized. So it could be that there's a lot of in-kind contributions to this project, but the reviewer can't tell that from this budget, right? It, it looks pretty lean. They've got some foundation support from their local county and from their local arts council. Um, but having more information uh, is going to be really helpful helpful for the reviewer to um, to really uncover how your project serves your community and how engaged it is with the community. And additionally, you know how much 
your community supports you and your organization. Um, okay. All right, so after you have completed and saved your budget, right? So you did that initially so that you could go through and edit um, all of your income and expense items, but you wanna make sure that you save it again, right? You don't wanna to go to all this hard work and then have the um, have it all disappear because you you accidentally didn't save it or your computer shuts down. So make sure to save as you go. And then go back into your application. You'll go back into your actual application in the system, and you'll want to look at the totals on your worksheet on that template. So you'll go to your total expenses, and you'll enter that into the application you'll enter in the total NAC request, and you'll enter in your total income. And again, the applications vary from category to category, but generally having these numbers helps us um, if we need to pull reports or we need to say, look at some data about what kind of you know, budget sizes are coming in, it's all really helpful for us. And so you wanna make sure that these fields on the application match what you have on your budget template. And then once you've done that, then you can go ahead and um, take a look at your narrative and make sure that it matches your budget. So that's, I would say really that's an important thing to do. And a lot of people go through the budget I've done this, I've been guilty of this. I go through the budget and I'm like, oh, thank goodness I'm done with the budget. <laughs> and then I just upload it. But you wanna take some time to go back through, read your narrative, compare that to your budget and think about what's missing. What haven't you said in your narrative that shows up in the budget and what's in the budget that you may not have mentioned in the narrative. Again, you want to minimize those questions that reviewers have and provide them ample information that really showcases how great your project is and how it's going to go off without a hitch. So you want to, you want to do that, and then you're ready to upload. And so you'll go back to the area where you downloaded your original budget template, and then you'll click upload a file and you'll upload your budget there. Okay.